of the part two. So now I'm gonna start sanding this thing and I paint the top. Yeah, because I want to get inside. I want to get a paint before I get inside. So I'm gonna take my orbital sander, paint off all the stuff I've been scraping, some paint. Let me show you the paint that I got. I got this uh, Krylon uh, gloss machinery gray. It's not the best paint to use, but I mean, I don't want to spend a ton of money on this thing. But yeah, I'm also gonna remove this box here too. This uh, thing right here. So, um, yeah, this all is kind of original. It looks like it was rivered on. So, three phase power, took that out. Yeah, I'm not gonna use that. Um, yeah, he's got 220 coming in. You know, in theory, you should be able to use 220 if you just use two sides, but. Um, all right, so I got a lot of scraping to do. See this stuff right here? Go through, I'm gonna sand it. I'm not gonna take the whole thing down to metal. I'm just gonna sand out some of these scratches and then prime it and then come back and paint it. Um, and then I'll be, I'm gonna wipe it down last time before I, I prime it, so. All right, so I got this thing covered in primer. So I think I'm gonna add a magnetic latch for that thing. I'm not gonna be able to find a little spring thing for that. Uh, the door latch on that side. Um, so I'm gonna paint the inside. I'm not gonna prime the inside. I actually have paint slash primer. What I do is, it's not as important on the inside. That dirt up. But what's interesting is this is a, a variable speed pulley, man. Super interesting. So I gotta find these belts. I don't think these. I don't these original belts for this. Um, really odd. Well, this goes like that, like that. But so this thing, this might not be very good for um, as an encoder. I guess it should know where it slips or not, but I might convert this to a timing belt. You know, like a cog timing belt, just for the encoder, the threading part of it, you know, for more precision uh, threading. But, uh, yeah, that's really interesting, though. <laughs> yeah, they had converted this to this big lead screw up here. Um, not lead screw, yeah, we'll like thread a rod here, Acme thread. Um, but it raises and lowers this, and this can, this changes the dynamic of the uh, of the uh, speed, you know, like the the size of the pulley. It's called a variable speed pulley. Um, but what's interesting though is this is not the right belt for this setup. Um, originally they came with like a flat belt, like the Hardage ones came with like a flat belt. So this is not the right belt. And plus this one's too loose. I'm probably gonna have to get a smaller one on the bottom. Like I, don't, I have no room for adjustment down the bottom. Plus this thing is missing so much stuff that. There used to be like an automated control that used to raise and lower this thing and they converted it to this thing right here. So yeah, it used to be electronic, you know, the speed control would change the RPM with this thing right here. So um, I might just do like a fixed type setup, you know, and maybe shorten this rod and just do like a permanent setup, you know, a fixed position. Right. So I'm gonna throw a cut of paint in here, I'm gonna blow it out again and uh, all right, we're still going. And then today I'm gonna to get a coat of paint on the outside of this thing, gloss. So, um, yeah, I guess some spots, but. All right, then I gotta take that pump out. Um, I'm gonna clean that pump out. I'm sure it's super messy inside. Uh, but I drained it out already, so it was clogged on the bottom, the coolant pump. Got the uh, old motor control thing out, the, the wiring. Let me show you this other thing too. It's interesting. Is this contactor right here? So I'm guessing it's like a door contactor. Um. So I'm guessing. I mean, if the door opens, it shuts it off. I'm not sure. I mean, that would be the only thing that makes sense. But really, I mean, I mean, dude, if you're cutting metal on a lathe, you know, I think you're probably already uh, aware of the safety concerns. You know, I don't think this would be the primary concern if you're cutting metal right above your head from here. But so I'm gonna remove that. It runs a piece of conduit. I'm just trying to simplify the wires. But if this was if this was a totally mint machine, I mean, I wouldn't be doing this conversion. But this thing was already butchered up already, so I don't feel that bad doing this. Uh, you know, converting this thing to CNC um, because these things are like amazing machines. You know, it would be uh, it'd be a it'd suck to take a perfectly mint machine and and butcher it up. So, all right. 
Alright, so I got this thing painted in my garage. Wow, this thing is heavy. But, um, so I got it in? Cool. Alright, let's take a look at this thing. So, I still have to do the carriage. Uh, paint and take apart the carriage. I'm going to totally take it apart. Like, one of the axes is totally stiff. So, um, I'm going to take it all apart. I'm sure it's just cake with grease or whatever. So, um, oh yeah, the VFD came in. So this thing actually, this is, I mean, this thing is tiny for like how, uh, you know, this thing actually do three horsepower. So, um, yeah, but it's pretty tiny. I'm actually, I'm still going to fit in there, uh, in this box. Yeah, I didn't know that when I first bought it. I thought I'm going to have to put it inside of this box. But yeah, so when I'm done with this, um, at least, well, at least for me, this is the, my, the fun part, the electronics. Uh, probably not good light in here. But. I'm gonna take out these old uh, cams. Like I said, if this was a you know a fully you know like mint uh, machine, I wouldn't be doing this uh, just because it was such a, like a mechanical masterpiece. Um, so I'm gonna have a computer in here. So most likely a, a mini ITX motherboard, and um, yeah, I'm also I, I don't need this many contactors. I'm gonna get a little bit of like probably only keep one set of contactors. I keep the main breaker here. I think it's broken it's missing a part okay yeah it's missing a, the top piece i might 3d print something for that a replacement because i mean i don't want to buy out a new one of these um yeah so right now it's three phase so i'm converting the, the input will be 220 and this will be giving three phase the motor and this is also giving me uh the cnc the control to be able to control like uh variable speed and um Variable speed and uh, on, I can control from the uh, CNC software. Then on the motor, I don't, I don't, I mean, for cutting threads, I don't like those variable speed belts, you know, the mechanical belts that go back and forth. So eventually, what I'm going to do is convert this over to a like a car timing belt. So I'm going to probably have to machine the pulleys to get the right diameters, but. Yeah, I want it to be like a like a tooth belt. That way, in case I got a reverse, it's not going to be kind of like a weird. It's not gonna, there's not going to be any belt slippage. Uh, I might lose some RPMs, but yeah, I'd rather have precise timing. Um, and other thing too, I'm going to 3D print uh, some stuff here for the uh, encoder. So I'm going to probably mount it here somewhere. There's existing bolt holes. Um, th th this was originally for like an attachment for like the uh, 5C collet attachment. And then here was like a threading attachment, I believe. So, yeah, cool. Lots of mounting holes. So I'm going to put like an encoder here. 3D print something. I may just screw onto these threads right here. And then bolt down. And I might do uh, either hall effect or optical. Haven't decided yet. Plus, I'm not sure if I want to do, um, you know, one, one revolution tooth count or multiple, you know, uh, optical wheel, like multiple teeth. Maybe give it some better accuracy. But I got to figure out. I'm going to do some testing. See what the best one is, but all right. So the next coming videos, I got to rebuild the carriage and the fun part, the electronics for me. Yeah, I got to take out this old massive transformer in here. Uh, I got to do the cooling pump. Um, there, yeah, I got to figure out the stop. I'm, I'm kind of new to these start the, the start stop switches with the contactors, and it's it's really interesting wiring how they do it. Like one of the switches is normally open and the other one's normally closed. And that's how they actually have it on and off when you control a contactor. So, but I'll go into more detail when I start to get to this point of it. Uh, because I'm going to strip this all down and, you know, make it all nice and clean. But actually, I might keep this wire. Just because it's original, nice, you know, really good copper wire. Um, yeah, they don't make metal like they used to. So, um, um. Uh, yeah, it's probably a pure, it's made in Japan, so it's probably Japanese wire versus Chinese wire. So, um, okay, cool. So, get it going. All right. Um, that's the end of this video. So, I'll be back in a couple days. i got to finish some other, some other stuff and clean out the garage. Get rid of this rack, too. Because actually, this is where the CNC machine is going to go right here. So, um... Yeah, so it's going to be the, the metal lathe and uh, the CNC machine. All right. All right, be back in a couple days.